Alright, this is uh, Foco Brick the Holiday, or at least the set without the cabinet. Cabinet's being glued. The sides, uh, the top and the sides fell off, so I have that clamped and glued. In the meantime, I want to power this up just to see what we get out of this. Uh, That's the TV I got for free from my neighbor. This just came out of plug there. Uh, most of the tubes on this board were missing, so I had to. I think I found this one and this one in my stash, and the rest I had to order. Um, so, we're going to plug this in and see what we get. Uh, the CRTs they use in these were not known for longevity, so I want to see if I can get a raster, and if I do get a, ra a visible raster, uh, that looks like the CRT is going to be useful, then we can proceed from there. See, one of the coils here is damaged. So I have to figure out what to do about that. I think that's the, I think that is a, um, yeah, 4.5 megahertz trap for the video output tube. But I did define the service information for this, so I was looking over that while seeing what tubes I need to get. Uh, anyway, got a speaker hooked up here so we can see here if there's any filter hum. Got the screen plugged in. Um, this set has had some work done on it. You can see the. This is not the original power switch. The original power switch was this thing. I think it was supposed to be a push on and it latched in and then you pushed it again and it popped back out. As you can see, it's just flopping all over the place. Uh, these sets were not high quality. They're pretty cheaply made and they have a lot of, prone to a lot of failures. So, um, like I said, the only money I have spent so far was just to order these tubes. And if it doesn't work, I can pull the tubes and perhaps choose them somewhere else. Anyway, let's plug this in. Well, turn it on and see if anything blows up. It's on. All the bugs just can't even hear anything. I can't really tell if the tubes are going or not. It doesn't really look that way. I don't see any tubes going. Alright, well, pull the plug and do a resistance check to make sure our switch actually works. Okay, so we'll check between the two pins of the plug. And we have nothing. Let's try flipping the switch. Still nothing. All right. Let's see if. Don't tangle up now. Let's see if any sides of these reach the switch. Right, 1.2 ohms. Let's the other side. Right, 1 ohms. So the switch seems to be making contact. I think next in line is this usable resistor here. It's connected. And that looks connected, alright. So, we have a thermistor down there. There's a orange wire that comes off this huge resistor and goes down underneath for something. I'm probably going to have to unplug the yoke and everything to get underneath. Let's just see if I can poke down at this thermistor down here. There all this. There's some continuity there. Um, we have the tube chart here, so let's see what kind of tubes we've got. Um, so it goes into the thermistor, then to V11, which is horizontal output. And V11 goes to, let's try this one, that's V3, is that on this board? Two. 
B7. B7 is right here. If we can get it, depends on that. 4 and 3. So we'll go right here. This should be V7. Let's see if we can. Alright, yeah, front three there. There. So we know we're making it at least at least here to V7. Uh, let's see. V9, V8, V8 over here. BR7. So that is pins 5 and 9. Or let's say 4, 4, 5, and 9. Can you see that? No. Pins 4, 5, and 9 on V8 are filament. So that should be. Wait. Yeah, this should be V8 right here. That's part of pin 1. And we have nothing. Alright, how about... So V9 goes to V8, and it's 4 and 5 on V9, which is this guy. Alright, we have it there on pin 4. And nothing on pin 5. Okay. not making it's a tight tube socket. Alright, now it seems to be making connection. Now let's check between our two plugs again. Alright, now we look good. So we have filament continuity through the set. So let's try plugging it in again. Let's see what happens this time. So here we go. I do have the plate cap that's connected off the horizontal output. See so how we going this time. Now we're going. I don't hear anything from the speaker. There we go, now we hear a crackle. No filter hum at least. Alright, let's see what happens if I connect this. I don't see anything on the screen, so either the horizontal oscillator is not running, or the flyback is bad, or the screen is bad. How we can test that. This is the horizontal oscillator right here. Make sure it's making good connection. Still seeing nothing on the screen. Um, what we could do is see if we're making high voltage. This should be. If we get a screwdriver, we should be able to arc to that with this connected. Without high voltage. So, put that cap back on. With this connected, we should be getting something on the screen. We're not. So let's fiddle with these controls over here. See if one of them is brightness. Actually, I have paper. I don't know what they are. So brightness is the outside of one of them. I'm not sure if you should hold it this way or that way. Because the controls are vertical, but the picture is horizontal, so we'll just play with the outside ones, see what we get, if anything. Seems to be nothing there. 
and there seems to be nothing there. So this is starting to look like the screen is no good. I don't see any sort of flicker or anything from it at all. Play with this wire a little bit. This wire right here is the video signal. Seems to have no effect. No sign of life at all from the screen. Uh, what I have to do is get a. Well, yeah, check the voltage on that. But let me get the schematic first and see what I can. I can tell from that. Okay, so this is the connector for the other. Um, grids and stuff back here in the tube, and then that one wire comes out, goes over to the video output tube. Now this coil right here is the coil that's broken. I don't think that would matter because this just capacity couples the signals onto that line. So even with this out of the picture, this should still have a path to ground and you should get some kind of light on the screen. So this says 35 volts should be on that connector there that one wire, so let's check that. Hundred and three volts. That doesn't seem right. So let's see what voltage we have on these control, and this is 77 volts, 0.4 volts, and nothing. So either this is the brightness or that's the brightness, because it's the outside one. So we can check down here. 1.3 volts. Nothing. Nothing. I don't think I can find noise. I'm not sure if my volume control is acting up or capacitor is breaking down somewhere. Anyway, so this should, for the schematic, come right through that connector there to this. 220k resistor, then to the brightness control, and that should be 35 volts. And we just measured 100 something volts here, so something in this path is messed up. Um, my bet would be the brightness control, but I'm not sure whether the brightness control is on the top or on the bottom because they just give you this. So it's either either that's the top or that's the top. I'm not sure. Let's turn this off and do a continuity check and make sure that this connector here has continuity to ground, as it should. Twelve, that doesn't look quite right. That should change if I change to that one or that one. Let's see if it changed. something just charging. I might have to wait a minute for that to stabilize. Um, so we can try and find this uh, 220k resistor right there. It should be fairly close, I would think. 
actually it's right here. So there should be continuity between here and here. somewhere, I would think. Let's see this one right here. So let's see if we have continuity from here. That's not good. 2.7 megs. So it's just do okay. Alright, we're going to have to let this capacitors discharge for a minute. Okay, so I would say that resistor is probably bad. If I go on here and here, I've got a direct connection. If I go to the other side of the resistor, at 2.16 egg ohms. Now let's see if that side of the resistor goes to ground, as it should. Yeah, something's not right here. I think what I'm going to do, just for testing purposes, is get a 200k resistor, attach it to ground, and then attach it to this. That will by bypass all this weirdness in here, between this resistor measuring off and the brightness control doing who knows what. So I'll just do that for now and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so let me explain what I'm doing here. This is the cathode of the CRT that comes out on this wire. And that's really where the video signal goes in. Now in order for the tube to work at all, this has to have a path to ground. Because the current flows from the high voltage electrode, which isn't shown in this picture, but that's up here on the side, the current flows from the high voltage down to the cathode through the tube. So in order for that to happen, this cathode has to have a path to ground, which it does right here. So it comes down through this little choke here, hopefully that's not open, uh, down through this 220k resistor to the brightness control, then down to ground. So if this path is broken or has a high, too high of a resistance, you are not going to get any image on the screen or any life from the screen, because there's no way for the current to flow through the tube. Um, so, what we have now is between here and ground, we're getting some really weird readings. Could be from capacitors, could be who knows exactly what. Regardless, when I checked the voltage here, it was too high, so something is messed up in this circuit. So what I've done is, I've stuck a 220k resistor in the end of that wire, and by touching that to ground, we can bypass this whole thing. We'll just go right from here through our new 220k resistor to ground and see if that makes the tube light up. Um, then that would have the same effect as turning the brightness all the way down to maximum brightness. Because when the, this is all the way at ground, you're getting the maximum current flowing through the tube. So, let's power this back up and see what happens this time. Actually, it looks like it might. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to see where we can get a good ground on, but probably right here on the solder bar. Plug this in. So that it's not completely shorting to ground. And of course there goes the resistor. Alright, so now we've got our resistor in here, so that is warmed up. Let's see what happens if we touch this to ground. Nothing happens. So it's really starting to look like this tube is going to be no good. I can try checking a few more things, namely the voltages on that socket right there. Nope, 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 I do see a little bit of a flicker. Oh, come on, stupid resistor. Shot myself here. I do see a little bit of a flicker there. Stay in there. See if you can see it on camera, which is a reflection, but 
there you go. So it does have a flicker of life left in it. It's not particularly bright, but of course, who knows how dirty the cover is on there. So, I guess we can proceed. Uh, thinking about whether it's going to be watchable or not, of course. I'm sure it's going to look if I clean up that thing either. Anyway, the COT is not 100% dead, but it doesn't look that great either. Um, you know, what I will do is I will check the voltage, the filament voltage here. Because the original tubes had like a 2.5 something volt filament, and the later ones had a 6 volt filament, so by, the replacement ones had a 6 volt filament, so by checking between, what is that, 4 and 5, uh, we should be able to tell what type of tube this is. tells me this isn't quite working. These are on AC volts, the components are AC. That might help. Right here, 8 volts. Doesn't seem quite right. Here, 0.32 volts. Um, that's bizarre. Let's check one of the right other tubes and see if two of the other tubes have reasonable filament voltage on them. So I tried checking. See, does it even have the CRT on here? Pretty sure the CRT is in the filament string. Quite sure. So numbers. What number is the CRT? B14. B14 is that one. That's just eight. Well, that'd be on the, the actual tube socket. Am I showing this? That's the CRT right there. Eight and one are the pins on the actual tube socket. I'm testing at the connector. Um, let's try your output B4. And it's 5 and 4, that's a 6 volt tube. So that is, should be this tube right here. What thing was it now? 5 and 4. That should be. One, two, three, four. These two, 5 point three. That seems right. So why is the CRT measuring 8 volts? I jumped up to eight. Something, something is weird there. They all seem to measure the same thing. I'm not quite sure which one's the right one. Eight volts. Yeah, it's not making connection. Even if with it, even with this out of here. So it says 8 volts. So this is not working as far as me checking the socket that way. Um, anyway, I'm still debating about whether to continue. Oh, screw the resistor. I think I'm not to continue with this because the tube is not great. 
not sure that'll be watchable. Of course, it is pretty bright out here outside, but still. You can see it, but barely. That should be a maximum brightness. And the contrast would have no effect here because we're just grounding the CRT cathode. Can you even see that in the camera? Uh, sort of. Anyway. Getting too hot. I'll check the other capacitors, see how warm they're getting. Um, anyway, at least we know that oscillators seem to be okay. You can't really, I mean, the tube's too dirty to really see how far up the production goes for vertical. So I have to clean that off a little bit just to see what we have. Um, anyway, what I was thinking about if this does work because of this issue. Um, I was thinking about just putting, just getting rid of the tuner completely and just putting, I mean not getting rid of it, but bypassing it, just putting a video input and sound input RCA jacks on this and feeding it right into the video and audio circuits. Um, I mean I have no knowledge for this anyway, so there's really no point in using the tuner because it's not going to be able to tune anything. It's actually even the sound of the speaker. Don't turn any static though. Alright, what I think I'm gonna do is clean that up, see if I can get a better idea of how bright this could be, and we'll go from there. Well, even with it cleaned up, you still can hardly see the raster at all. Uh, if I short out this to ground, you kind of see it sometimes flicker a little bit. I think my ground connection really is not the best. You just barely see anything. I'm shorting the cathode directly to ground, so I think this tube is basically dead. Um, yeah, so obviously I'm not going to get a replacement tube for this because that would just be crazy expensive for something that's in nowhere near worth of condition. Um, but maybe I'll come up with some idea for this something. We'll see. Well, that's going to be about it for now. Um, like I said, only money put into this was the tubes, which I can pull and perhaps use somewhere else. But it's really weird tubes, though, most of them. The ones that I had were this one, 6AW8, and this one, 6CG7. All these other ones are, that's probably a pretty common one, maybe, but like these only were in like 3 volt tubes, 9 volt tubes. There's an 11 volt one somewhere. Uh, maybe not. Anyway, that's going to be about it for now. This is not going to be a perfect TV anymore, unless it's just a display model, because the picture tube is dead. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention it could be reduced high voltage, but I doubt that's it. I mean, it had a nice arc. I didn't even get my screwdriver anywhere near the flyback. So, and near the cap and it arced right over. So I don't think that's the problem. Uh, anyway, that's about it for now. Thank you for watching.